Hi. Hi. We gotta get the hundred shakes in. Oh, there's our guest. Hi. Who's coming in? Oh my God, Susan Legassi. Hey, hey, hey. Hi, everyone. Making the martini. I had to have a martini because it's a really, ah, special night. <laughs> it just splashed. Look at that. Okay, tonight, while we're waiting, it's five o'clock, while we're waiting for people to come on, I am having a mango habanero martini. So I got this, I'm obsessed with these infused spirits. Mango habanero mixed with my small bottle of Belvedere. It's been a long two months. And <laughs> I mix it together, sprig of rosemary. Welcome to Get Sauce. Let's get sauce. Mm. Oh, wow. Oof. Got a kick. So tonight, actually, my food is prepped, but not cooking. For those of you who are interested in that little sidebar, but I am doing a roasted chicken in honor of my guests, and I'll tell you why later. But it's all ready to go in the oven. Look at that. Those of you who follow me on Instagram have seen the photos of my roasted chicken. So I'm doing roasted chicken, having a, a mango habanero martini, and getting ready to welcome my guest. Welcome back to Get Sauce. I think this is week nine. Hi, hi, hi. Oh, look at all the, I love seeing the regulars. Um, okay, week nine, and that's what I'm eating and drinking. So uh, my guest tonight is waiting to come on, which is so awesome. She is a three-time, so I'm gonna brag, so be prepared, Beth. Three-time Tony nominee, one-time Tony winner, which we're gonna fix because she's amazing. She made her Broadway de debut in 1980, sorry, uh, is a replacement for Anytime Annie in 42nd Street. So I didn't know she could tap. We're gonna talk about that. She played the role, as you all know, of Beatrice Stockwell in The Drowsy Chaperone. She helped create that character's backstory. For this role, she received a Tony Award and a Drama Desk Award for Best Featured Actress in a Musical. Her other many Broadway credits include Crazy For You, Showboat, Civil War, 42nd Street Again in 2001, Young Frankenstein, Mamma Mia, Elf, Baby It's You, Bandstand, there you go. And last year she was nominated for, her, uh, for a Tony Award for Best per Performance by an Actress in a Leading Role for The Prom. Drum roll, because I'm trying to get better at this. Please join me, the wonderful, incomparable, here she comes, Beth Level. Hey! <laughs> How are you? Lovely introduction. I am thrilled to be virtually in your kitchen. I, <laughs> I, I'm screaming at Adam. What is that? Mango, what? Wait, and then jalapeno, what? So, <laughs> Cheers. Cheers to you. What Thank are you me. drinking? Oh, something I've never tried before. It's called Chardonnay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think I've ever seen you drink a Chardonnay. Yeah, you know, I, I, I never drink wine. So I have found the, uh, the pandemic has exposed me to some lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, but where are you? Because it's a backdrop I'm not used to seeing. Well, because my fiance, Adam Heller, decided to set up a different scenario as opposed to the office we're usually in. So we're in the living room. It's, it's, very, it's very glamorous. I, there's a candle lit. Oh. I said, I'm with Rob Heller, we have to we have to make this extraordinarily special. Rob, I said Rob. <laughs> <laughs> All right, how many Chardonnays have you? Oh, theater work swag. I anyway, I am full bling. <laughs> I first of all, 
A lot of people don't know, and I think I can say this now. You're breaking up a little bit. Is that me? Do you sound okay? It's okay to me. You sound okay. All right. I'm going to take these. Are you wearing headsets? I'm taking these off. All right. Um, now I think that's better. All right. So I think I can say that we're good friends because we've been, you know, we've done three shows and we've done a lot of hangouts together. And, um, and I love that most about our relationship. But the fact that your work is extraordinary is, you know, blows my mind. We're going to talk about that. But first, two important things. How did we meet? <laughs> well, I met you because of my fiancé, Adam Heller, because you had, you had directed him and you become his pal. You did uh, make me a song. And we met. Stopped, and we just started seeing each other and we hugged and that's how we first met each other. And the rest yeah. is history. The rest is history. Oh my God. And I'm so glad we did. I'm just looking. I keep hearing you break up, but you're not hearing that. So if anybody else, can, can you all understand us out there? Maybe it's my crappy headsets, which are getting old. I need a new pair of headsets. Breaking up bad. She's chopped. Yeah, breaking up badly. Um, I want, is your signal okay? Great. Oh, okay. Hmm. This is so funny. You know, I've learned the techno technology, but it's been fine. So let's hope it's okay. All right. right We're going to keep plugging along. Are you near the window or near your, near your thing? I'm going to blame Adam Heller for moving your location. You know, if it gets really bad, I'll go to another room. Okay. Now it's, that seems good. Sounds okay now. All right. So we met through Adam and we have done Hello Dolly, Oklahoma, and Gypsy all at our beloved Muni. Shout out to Mike Isaacson and our friends at the Muni. Yeah. You know, it's small roles for a, a director actress relationship like Mama Rose and Hello Dolly. Yeah. So I, I just, while I'm thinking about it, I want to thank you for taking such good care of me and being so brilliant in your uh, storytelling. Thank you. Oh, you're an amazing collaborator. And um, I'm just going to get rid of these because it's, I'm hearing this crackling, but it needs, we're going to do this. Yeah, I don't know. Um, so what do they call you at the Muni? Come on, Mike. Okay, Mike has named you this, I'll tell you, but this is not something you've asked for. But when you go there, you see on your dressing room door this. Dame level. <laughs> Dame level. Uh, how many shows have you done at the Muni? The little uh, ID tags, it's not Beth level, it's Dame level. It's like, hello. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Out of curiosity, I was counting the other night because, and it's 13, which seems to be a reoccurring number in my life. Number prom, prom is number 13 Broadway show, getting ready to, but it's like, and I've done 13 shows at the Muni. Wow. So, you know. Yeah. It was one of my first jobs when I got my equity card. I was third wife from the left in uh, The King and I. And did I tell you this? I was standing by for Lynn Redgrave. No. I was. 23 years old or something, but this was before, this was pre Mike Isaacson. This is a very funny story. So I went in and I was third, you know, wife from the left. And in my contract, because legally, I think you had to actually have a, a, an understudy of some sort, but I didn't take it seriously. It's like, note to self. <laughs> so I night in, you know, I'm singing my whatever. And Lynn Redgrave goes, getting to know you. <laughs> And I, I remember just trying to hold my third wife from the left pose. And she's having a coughing attack. And she gets up enough vocals to go, oh my, it's very dry in Siam. <laughs> she left the stage. So we're all there like, and all I'm thinking of is, oh my God. And, you know, she came back on with a, a sip of water and she did the rest of the show. But I went home that night 
lesson to my 23 year old self. I went home that night, got home, you know, about 1130 as you do at the Muni. And memorized the, I could at 23, memorize the entire script. Oh my God. Did you go on? But I was ready. I went to bed about nine o'clock that the next morning, fully kind of prepared as much as you could be. But can you imagine, you know, the roles usually played by Lynn Redgrave will be played by a 23 year old Beth Level. <laughs> <laughs> so fortunately she got better. You know, at, at the Muni, since it's outside, there's little things that float around and I believe she, she inhaled a cotton hoo-ha. Cotton thing. So we're sounding better. I'm looking at this thing. We're sounding better, but they're still having a couple of things. Where's your mic? I'm gonna go into the other room. Come with me. Oh. Come with me. Please don't look at things that aren't. <laughs> <laughs> I can't First believe it. But I have to say, I love first. that we're having this like weirdness because it's got to be you. You're, um, there, there you go. There are the show posters. There's Adam show Heller. Posters. He's, he's in the kitchen. He, uh, this is our one constructive thing we did during this uh, sheltering at home. We finally got all the show posters out, not all of them, but most of them out, and decorated the wall with shows that mean something to us. Oh, we're going to talk about those in a moment. But listen, oh, look, I'm you... Sorry. Wait, look you, at this. Oh, let's see. Can you read that? <gasps> well, it's, yeah, that's Gypsy. Yeah. Anyway, just wanted to show My you. My favorite. Well, yeah. not that I have favorites. But by the way, you sound much better now. And I think oh. you're probably closer to your Wi-Fi. You know, you're talking a language to me that... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think the Wi-Fi interception is working. <laughs> I didn't... You are, I love you. Listen, so we did, I want to get past, because I want to get to like the Broadway stuff, but we did Hello Dolly. That was our first dance together. You had played the role before, but we had such a blast. It you were really an amazing Dolly. And I have to tell people, when you said, I'm going to join the human race and sang before the parade passes by, what happens when you do that song at the Muni? I'm not sure I understand the question. Oh, what what happened on stage when you said before the parade passes by something happened that only happens at the Muni? Oh, you mean the the marching band? Yes. <laughs> How oh, many yeah, seventy five? Like, quiet pieces. part of the thing. I'm like, did they did they applaud? Did they said no? At the, when it gets to the big part of it, the uh, yeah, there was a marching band. 75 pieces. Besides the already large cast, Mike Isaacson gave us a 75 piece marching band that Ralph Perkins, the choreographer, kind of, and I remember you had that baton. And, but like, it was like this weird, I love, that's what I love about the Muni. You know, I had a Jeep in South Pacific that drove on the stage, right? I do, as you do. It's <laughs> But what I learned about you in that show was, you know, because I, ne I never met you. I was a fan. And you know you as funny comedian Beth Level. And you got to exercise those muscles. But you broke, you also, and I was like, hello, Dolly. How do you bring that heart? You made me cry every time I saw it when, because you got under there. So our next journey together was Oklahoma. And I was like, oh, this is good. Like, Beth doesn't have to, like, lean into the comedy. She can be the earth. Right. And we practiced that color. And you were amazing there. I and had no idea how much I would enjoy that role. It was kind of, Aunt Eller, really? That's where I am now in my career? <laughs> like, oh, no. I, but I loved her so much. I loved having the responsibility to, to be the grounding force and to be the earth and to be kind of the voice of reason. It was really, really lovely. So thank you. Well, Beth doing that Oak Leaf, yeah. Oh, honest, that's so cool. The Oak Leaf monologue was, yeah. Uh, you, you, what, um, uh, but in Oklahoma, like what I loved is that we didn't do an old gnarly, and we didn't do that in Oklahoma. We had like, a, you know, we did Stroman's choreography, the first production to ever do it, but you, 
played like she doesn't have to, by the way she doesn't have to be this old you know old older you know life lived woman you were vital you were earthy i think i saw ben davis on here if you're uh -huh. here ben are you really here you know you know him he's always on instagram I do. But anyway say hi ben if you're there um the and then of course we did gypsy and that was one of the most meaningful things in my career. So thank you for that. You're welcome. But Me as well. You took that role with such courage and you, you, you didn't go, you could, it's like a week, right? First of all, we rehearsed a little bit extra, but 10 days, 11 days of rehearsal, you rocked it and you didn't, you just went there. You left that, you left it on the stage every night. Well, you know, the King Lear of a, for a, an actress in a musical. And I was so terrified. Ben Davis is saying hi. We're gonna pop him on for a minute, maybe. Yes, please. Hear what he has to say about you, but go oh, ahead. I was so terrified of the enormity and the responsibility and the history of everyone that had played that role and that I, I didn't have the ability to live up to it or I, uh, it wasn't gonna work. and. You made me feel so safe that I was, a, I really was able to throw everything I had up against the wall. And you told me what stuck. And it was really, I'm, I'm so proud of us for creating something so singular that summer. And something that's been done so many times, but man, it really imprinted in me in ways that I really would like us to do it again. Yeah, me too. That's my, it's my, it's my deep, Doc would like dream because I want more people to see. And it was a great, I, I agree. I'm so grateful for our partnership because you pushed me too. And that's what makes that actor director thing work. And, yeah. and we trusted each other. So good at that. And remember the time downstairs in the rehearsal room that we knew I had to go through Rose's turn. Uh, I didn't know if like you wanted to tell that story. Tell the story. Well, I'm gonna let you tell your version of it too, but how do, how do you do that? It's like you come in, it, I mean, do you block it? Do you just do it? Do you whatever? And I remember you just let me do it. And we did it from beginning to end. And at the end of it, I burst into tears. <laughs> Relief and satisfaction and it's the emotional journey. And we all hugged each other and it's like, okay. Let's just leave that alone and see what how how that blossoms and what happens. And it was really, I looked forward to that moment every single show. Every and show. that if anybody who's seen the clip, but so so here's my version of that. So interesting to hear your version of that, which is awesome and thank you. But my version of of memory is that. We were gonna rehearse it and I was trying to protect you and be like, let's right. just like like it light and let's just like let's just explore the shape of it. Don't feel any pressure. And you're like, just let me do it. I just gotta just let me give it a go, which is if anybody's watching that wants to hear that, one thing I love about you is you're like, let me just jump in the pool and see how much water is there <laughs> later. And you said, let me just do it. And there was like a handful of us there, and you started to go and you could just feel that you just jump without a net and you and this stuff so it's the same thing this thing came out i remember you just crying afterwards we were all crying and i went up and i hugged you and i said that was amazing you know i have your back and i said to you <laughs> you know you have to go there every time right <laughs> and you do but you did and which I is awesome and all right I'm going to see if Ben's here. I'm going to pop you off. By the way, your connection's much better. So Adam, hello, I'm going to yell at you later. I'm going to see if Ben wants to pop on so we'll get a little quick inside scoop and then I have a lot more questions for you. And a game. If Heller wants to come on, we have a game. So you can do it together. Hey, all right, I'm going to be right back. Don't okay. go anywhere. Okay. Hey, everyone. I'm so happy you're with us. Oh, there he is. My pop-on guest. Mr. Ben Davis, another amazing actor. How are you? Hello. Oh, you're all inside today. You're inside. Usually you're on your sofa. 
I'll go. Well, I know. Well, I go. I can go outside. Actually, no, you can, well, maybe you want to see your your view. But as long as the as long as the weather stays good, it feels better out here. Actually, how are, how you? are you? How much? Beth Level is like one of my all time favorites, and Adam Heller actually are my all time <laughs> favorites. Well, you know, I collect actors. You and I have done many shows together, and you know, I guess I can't say the name, but we were supposed to do another project together this summer, which. We will do. We will do it. Um, I don't know if Mike will let us say it, so we'll hold that off. But um, it's so awesome to see you. You look more handsome than ever. And that is, you're like, look at that view. Right? Where are it's, you? I'm down. I'm on my terrace right now. Oh, my God. Look You've at been that. here. I know. It's beautiful. I get invited once. I'm waiting for my, what's it called? Your, your, your thing there? I call it the pickled grape. The pickled grape. You can kind of yeah. see... Wait, hold on. There you go, the pickled grape. Yes. <laughs> so um, you're really watching. You you were curly in our Oklahoma. Yeah. One of the many things we did together. What is the most memorable thing you remember about or a moment when you were on stage with Beth playing Ann Eller? I mean, there are a lot because she's just so much fun to be with on stage. Every moment is alive and every moment is, is real. But there was a moment I do remember. Um, where it's right when Curly and Lori get married and it's right before they sing Oklahoma. And there you had staged it so that, that, that Ann Eller would come up to me and we just have a moment of connection. And the thing about people like Beth, you know, I was thinking about as I was watching it and the way she talks and her whole persona reminds me a lot of Maren Maisie, who is a, a dear friend and, and also a, a performer like, like Beth, who. The, there's just a light in their eyes. And when they look at you, you light up because of them. And um, that's what I remember is just her coming up to me and looking at me and uh, the feeling that that inspires inside you. And you know what? Adam has it too. I mean, that's, a, that's the, the amazing thing about the two of them is that there's a generosity and a uh, selflessness about their acting that uh, when you come across it, you want to hold on to it as much as you can. Yeah, it's special. It's really it special. And I think, you know, those people are full of Adam and Beth are people that are actors, friends that I work with a lot like you. And the specialness means that they're not, if this makes sense, not afraid of the truth and, um, and will connect in a way that is real and profound and that people feel that. And I love that about our collaborations because I know all I know all your skeletons, Ben Davis. You do. You actually really. You do. know, some are mine too. So or I know how to help you. But uh, <laughs> you know, the, the great thing is, is that both Adam and Beth, they're they're interested in people, and then and that's what I've gotten from both of them, uh, from the the time that I met them, and that comes off on stage too. Uh, and I think that that's those are the best actors I've found, or the people that who are genuinely interested in other people um it, it makes it a lot of fun to be with on stage generous is the good word um yeah. thank you for popping on thank you we, for we're gonna have me. to do our own conversation because we could tell some stories ben davis dear god i would love that but i'm so so thankful you invited me on to uh to, to espouse uh beth's greatness yeah i always had to love that and I, I thought you were a great person to do that i love you i'll love talk you to you soon all right stay stay safe Okay. Enjoy. Bye bye. Bye. Okay, I'm going back now to our guest. Oh, where did you go? Um, let's see. Where'd you go, Beth Level? Um, hi everyone. Oh, there's Adam Heller. Adam Heller, you're in trouble. Um, Beth, ask to come on. I lost you. Um it's so funny. I do really well with this technical stuff. And then I get in trouble once a show. So I hope you all think it's his. Oh, there she is. Wait, where did she go? Did she pop up? There she is. You help me. I love you. Here she comes. Here comes Dame Level. Mike Isaacson, that was for you. And she is. She, but I think that I will say while she's coming on that I love that we got to the word generous because I think as an artist, as a performer, 
there is there's a generosity there and Beth has this way of leading a company that defines the word star. <laughs> it's the cocktail. <laughs> no, Matt, it's not the cocktail, but Beth, I think she's having internet issues because it says connecting, but I don't see her. She better stand by. Oh, let's see, I lost her again. All right, didn't this happen when I tried to get Adam on? We're gonna try again. But I've learned to not panic because I have chicken and a drink. So there we go. There she is. <laughs> don't I'm you, like, don't you like, love Ben Davis? Like oh my God. Yeah. gushing I about have, you. And just the clamp. That was so lovely. I, thank you. It helped me deal with the fact that I couldn't get on your program. <laughs> <laughs> the apartment like a chicken with but, a head. Okay. <laughs> but this is why I love doing Instagram Live, you know, because it's so spontaneous and awesome. flawed and real. And but did you hear what he said about you and Adam Heller? I guess I assume people know, but Adam Heller, another wonderful collaborator of mine. You guys are you guys are engaged. We are. I uh and I've offered many times to marry you, so the offer stands publicly. But Thank I you. want to talk Tonys. I, you, we don't often have a Tony winner. First Tony nom and oh! <laughs> I've never, oh my God, I have to hold it when I, I'll never have one. Yes. So, well, yeah, well, I'm going to get one for our revival of Gypsy. That's what it's going to be. So what was it like to get the nom? What was it like to receive the Tony? I mean, that's a, not a lot of people can say they have that thing. So. I know. Um, it was overwhelming. It was a privilege. It was life changing. To be nominated for a role I felt I had given s such birth to and that my DNA was all over it and that no one knew what it was. And then they cast me and kind of, I, I it, it was, I loved that role and it was amazing and literally my life changed. But, but before you go past it, you said something that you told me that I don't think a lot of people know. How, how you said like you, you really shaped the role with the other collaborators. What's that story? You know, it was one of those roles, it had been done in Canada and it was so successful, a version of it had been done in Canada. It was so successful that New York producers had gone up there, brought it back to, I believe it was Nymph. I wasn't involved with that. And this role, the role of Beatrice Stockwell was in there very confusingly, not knowing who this woman was, but they know they need someone with comedy and to sing this or that. And they kept trying to discover who it was. They auditioned all over the place. I, I, I auditioned, didn't get it. Oh my God, After I love call, that story. Casey, Casey said, I just don't think you're the person to bring this woman to life. And I completely agreed. And then the, all of the creatives went to Los Angeles and auditioned a lot of TV stars, like Eartha Kitt. And, wow. and uh, Tina Louise, you know, these, that kind of ilk, that kind of dame. None of it worked out. They came back to New York. They kept auditioning people. And out of, I like to think, desperation, <laughs> they called me and offered it to me. And my agent called and I said they'd made a mistake that they didn't offer it to me because I didn't get it. And they said, nope, it's yours. You pack your bags because you leave for a three-month out-of-Broadway, out-of-town tryout uh, in Los Angeles. And to get into a room with everyone that had done it before, and to really figure out who this woman was. And it was one day that it just clicked. We were doing theater games. <laughs> That's oh, what? Yes, theater games for like a week. And I remember Casey saying, we're gonna do some theater games, you know, set the tone. And I, I remember a, an internal eye roll going on. I love theater games. <laughs> I know, I mean, like, I don't know. I'm not into theater games, I guess. It's, but it worked. Oh my God, we were doing Hot Seat. And, you know, we had to write a bio where everyone, you know, these. I do books, love that, writing bios. Absolutely. But I just made up one. <laughs> I was a terrible professional because I did not know who she was. So I was writing just um, her family history, her parents. I just had no idea what was, who this woman was, and nor did anyone else. So I remember one of the last days of Hot Seat, which is where you sit in the seat. 
and there's the creatives and it was pretty much anyone in Los Angeles with sitting behind the table and throwing questions at you and you have to respond in character and it's very you know spontaneous and yeah. and when you don't know who you are it's rather terrifying but I remember one of the last days Casey said it was my turn to sit in the seat it was like oh here we go so I just wanted to I'm so sorry I'm so sorry to be wasting everyone's time and Casey said for the first time ladies and gentlemen Dame Beatrice Stockwell and I remember hearing that and being fueled by that. And as I'm walking to the stool, the creatives and everyone behind the table stood up and started applauding and saying, bravo, brava, blah, blah, blah. And I remember bowing all the way to the floor and staying there. And I remember thinking, there she is. Oh my God. There she is. And from that moment on, we knew where to start. And then I was in the room singing Stumble and writing Stumble around me and how long can I hold that note and how high could I belt and blah, blah, blah. So again, having, feeling such a glorious responsibility for giving birth to this Beatrice Stockwell and to get a Tony Award for it was like, <laughs> thank you. What, you really <laughs> didn't cast me the first time? I had to come back like three times? <laughs> <laughs> The lesson is you cast Beth Level the first time. But well, but in all seriousness, it was the Chardonnay, right? You had a bottle before that hot seat. Before what? Before, before you seat. sat in the hot seat, you had a little oh, Chardonnay. Right. It was 9.30 in the morning, so. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, it just, I remember sitting in the theater. I went to see the show, The Drowsy Chaperone. I didn't know much about it. My friend, Michael Schweikart, if you're watching, said, let's go see Drowsy Chaperone. And I remember, I didn't know if it was going to be my thing. And I remember how much I loved it. And I remember, I didn't know you, but I just remember you could feel your, 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 your um, connection to the role, but your, your, your uneditedness, your freedom, it just was alive. It wasn't a performance. It was, it was actor and role, just like riffing. And I have to say, I again and again have that experience with you and I'm going to get the clip. So I'm going to stop there. I, thank you so much. Here, I was having such a crappy day and you're just making me feel <laughs> alive. So thank you. Thank Last you. year, you were nominated for the prom, DD, uh, right? Uh, mm -hmm. um, it's not about you, but we all love you. <laughs> <laughs> no, and you, you called in something, you called working with your tribe. There was an interview where you said, I think, unless I misread something, you, your cast was, you, you, was your tribe. Um, what was that like working on the prom? Oh. Which, by the way, my friend Matt Poland, who's watching, no, and I have a contest up. about who can lip sync the lyrics. You met Matt at the theater. Who can lip sync all the lyrics to The Ladies right. Improving. Someday when I'm really drunk, I'll do it. But go ahead. So what, why did you call him your tribe? Oh. oh no, you're breaking up now. You were so good. Well, I, oh, wait a second. I feel like we my can't hear you. Storytellers even right? are my tribe. You know, we, yeah. how about now? Am I okay now? The lady's improving. How about you're now? frozen, but oh. I can hear you. That's New York. New York is so unprotected. There we go. Oh no, are you there? Now, okay, now you're frozen, but I'm just gonna be, can you hear me? He's cutting yes. out. She's, okay, no, great. you're good, good. The oh, tribe and the prom. You know, I'll go around and the, the proverbial campfire and tell stories. That's what we do for a living. So, all of my actors and people in the theater, I consider my tribe. But when I cross over a cast, they're my family tribe. And you know, when you're doing a <laughs> show, but an original where it's so stressful and you need so much trust, I was so close to that cast. We, uh, we were each other's beer. And they're so talented and yeah, I think my DD is, uh, they're responsible for, <laughs> for making well, me feel so safe and loved and talented. And I felt like I could do anything. I felt like, again, like with you, I didn't have to edit. I could everything I had into the room and be safe. 
you could feel that, you know, and I went to see you and I, I remember wanting to hang out with you so often after a show, but once the Tony nom happened, that was done. But the fact that you belted those songs night after night, you, you again put yourself in a situation where you had to deliver the role. You pretty much had to like unwind the rest of the night and day until you were back at the theater. And not, not many women not many artists will make that sacrifice. And I admire that so much in you that it's about delivering the role every night, like not, not calling, not, not phoning it in. You never, I've never, never. When you did Gypsy, you used to do the show, you used to go to bed and then I'd see you the next night. Hey, I could. Oh no. <laughs> but, no. <laughs> oh shit. Wait, did you move rooms again? Wait, did you move rooms? No, I'm still in the same room. Oh, I'm, that's so I weird. moved chairs. Okay. I just want everyone Go to Go back see. to where you were because cause you How weren't cutting out. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna be historic. I love it. Uh, holding that note for 36 seconds. Oh my God, you're frozen. 36 seconds is that note? I'm looking for a half. What, honey? Oh, wait, I'm frozen, right? You're frozen, but let's wait a second and not panic. But at the end of, um, is ladies improving. Ladies improving. <laughs> and prizes involved. <laughs> there were prizes involved in five seconds. And, you know, I felt Dee Dee would do that. It wasn't like I was imposing untruth on, but it became, they would admit every night. So I, I hit, I believe, 37 uh. seconds. Oh, that's a pretty face. Whoa. Um, it's okay. It's so weird. I'm so, I, we're doing okay. We're going to get through. Hang in there, everybody. Um, but listen, the one thing that I hope it's okay. Well, I'll, I'll do this. I will. Yeah, there you go. I will do this so you can control the answer. You are working on a current project for Broadway that, you know, has, I think people know, has been yes. you know, suspended because of COVID. Can you say what it is? Can you? Absolutely. Can you hear me? Yeah. The Devil Wears Prada. Can Devil you hear Wears me? Devil Wears Prada. With, uh, yeah, I can hear you. Oh, good. Where yes, are you going? I'm, I've been, I'm walking. How about now? I'm doing Miranda Priestley in The Devil Wears Prada whenever that happens. Oh, the good wow. news whenever, is, it is going to happen. It is, the good news, good news in this uh, interesting time we're living in, that we weren't scheduled to start until May 2021 anyway. We're so, we were supposed to have done shop. I'm not sure what's happening with that but so we have a little, little time to figure out our industry and how to be safe and but man are, we are so going to be ready for that show when it comes around oh my god We're you are perfect and theater. and theater works hard for you are perfect um you, you know, because we had technical difficulties, you have to come back on, just so you know. <laughs> I'll take advantage of this anytime. Okay. But does Heller want to come on for the game or just you and me? Oh, no. We're not panicking. Oh, there you are. Stay still. <laughs> <laughs> I have to do my game. It's so good. Do you want to do it with you, I, just you and I? Yes. <laughs> okay. So the game is called. I don't know called... what the question was, but yeah, I'll do it just for you. No. Oh. The game is called the Drowsy Prom Chaperone. Okay. Okay. And I'm going to ask you several questions about proms. So I hope you did your research for Dee Dee Allen because, and they're true or false or multiple choice. So you don't have to worry. Okay. All okay. Right. Here's your first question. This is my favorite part of the, these, of these uh, get sauce is we always have a game. And my staff, shout out to Eric Ort, 
who, who helped me with this one. Um, was the concept of a prom king and prom queen introduced in the Roaring Twenties, Depression Era Thirties, Sock Hop Fifties, or Stoner Sixties? Oh my God, you're frozen. <laughs> I'm gonna... Yeah, now I can. Fifties? We're gonna do charades now. Fifties? Um, it's the Depression era thirties. Is that <laughs> <laughs> all so, right? Um... This is a good one. True or true or false? In a recent survey, I think you're good now. In a recent survey of girls 13 to 16, they ranked their enthusiasm for prom higher than their anticipation for planning their future wedding. So 13 to 16 year old girls, true or false, they rented prom higher than their wedding. True. False. Wedding of course came first are we okay hang in there i'm losing keeps but because because we're gonna keep going uh <laughs> true or false are you there <laughs> all right so we can i'm gonna keep going for a couple more you can hear me now yeah yeah we get you beautifully like i can all right the average prom in the US, the average prom budget in the United States is oh. for, for kids going to the prom, $566, $829, $1,078, one thousand two hundred and three dollars $78. Oh my God. Right? Okay. Yes. Is that limo? You know, the limousine and the la la la, we just showed up. Good for you. I never would have guessed that. True or false, capitalizing on the Kardashian phenomenon, a line of extra curvy padded booty prom dresses have been introduced under the label Junk in the Trunk Couture. Did you say true? True. False. True. <laughs> but I got you. <laughs> good. All right. Um, last one. This is good. In America, in America, proms are reportedly an, an industry that in America annually earns $40 million, $400 million, or $4 billion. Four forty million. Was that the middle choice? Four hundred million. It's, is that the highest choice? Four hundred million. The highest choice is four billion. Oh. Oh no. I can't hear you. This is so funny. We're gonna. All right. No, I just. Head. How about now? It's hilarious. Yeah. Like it's hilarious. We talk all the time. We never have any issues. You there? Four hundred million. Four. That was my billion. That was my, my four hundred million. Four billion dollars. All right. Ridiculous. Well. Ow. All right. Listen, you have to come back on now because because we Darn. had to struggle through this. Is that a deal? Is that a deal? All right, nod your head. Yes. Yes. <laughs> All right, you, you are amazing. I love you. And we're gonna do this again soon so I can get the, to the questions that I didn't get to. Okay. And we'll do a, and we'll hopefully have a better internet connection. But we got a lot of good stuff in. I love you. I'll call you in a bit. Thank you, everyone. I'm sorry for the technical issues. It's been a weird week. 
We had technical issues last night with internet. Maybe too many people are doing things. And I don't have these issues. And I talk to Beth and Adam all the time. So I appreciate your patience. I hope that um, uh, we'll, we'll figure it out. And we'll have Beth back on to finish these questions. A uh, couple of things before I go on June 5th. We're announcing, I announced last week, but we're, we're sending an email tomorrow, and Friday, next Friday, a week from tomorrow, June 5th, we're having the Good People cast reunion special. And the Good People, the, cat, the whole cast of Good People are coming. We're gonna catch up, but we're gonna read parts of the play, and we're gonna have some fun games. It's gonna be a blast. But we haven't tried reading that's such a great script we love you david Lindsay bear we're going to do that and then next week's guest on uh get sauced is the amazing randy harrison from queer as folk christmas on the rocks and he popped on as a guest and i hope you'll join us next week but we will schedule beth back in real soon because uh, i want to do i want to have her back when we're not struggling and hope you'll tune back in have a wonderful night. Stay safe. Stay well. Wear your masks. Bye.